It was rather exposing Barkhadat. And what you are reading now, everything is there. It's not only the positive ones are being said, even the negative ones are being said. So more than two-thirds have either realized, or maybe these are the people who know the media well, and realize it wasn't given. And there were some who appreciated her, the way she handled, not knowing the scenario. So what I say that those people, whenever they see any TV talk show, they should realize that talk shows per se, they are manipulative. What they do, that they either get a person who has less knowledge on that subject. So if it is the topic on Islam, they get a person who has no knowledge about Islam. And then he does the job, the moderator need not use the skills. Or on the other hand, they get a person who is famous and they cut him down, don't give a proper chance like what Barakhada did. Besides all these comments, besides interjecting me for more than 12 times, there is a way how a moderator knows when is the best time to ask a person. If you realized when she started the show, she first asked Shah Rukh Khan a question. Then she kept on asking other people. She asked me second last or third last. Why? Because in the beginning of the show, the later you ask the person, the better it is. But when she ended the show and she said, now we'll have the final comments from the panelist. The first person she asked was me. Why? Because the first person you asked, his remarks would remain the least in the mind of the audience. So these things are well known by us. But we cannot do anything. And that's the reason I think Javed Iqbal was impressed by Barkhadat. And that's how he did this comments. And even in that last final comment, she asked me a comment and I go to make a point that the Muslims should know how to answer the media. And I said that if we notice the incidents recently that came last month about the bomb blast that took place in Pune, in German bakery, where about nine people were killed. It came as headlines and suspect Muslims, suspect, mind you. And the same day, the Maoist, they killed 16 policemen, proven by Maoist, no suspect. It either comes as news briefs or it comes on the front page below. Immediately Barakadat interjected, no, even that came as headline and she passed on without allowing me to complain. She knew very well the point was so strong. So strong, even if it came on the front page, in most of the paper, including Times of India, the headline was, nine people killed in German bakery in Pune, suspects Muslims. Below in the front page, Maoists killed 16 policemen. Now, planning to kill one policeman is a bigger news than general innocent nine citizens of India being killed. Killing one policeman who is supposed to uphold the law in the country is a bigger news than killing general pedestrians on the street. Nine. And that also here, the person who has done that is known. Confirmed. The news article is small. The German bakery, both are terrorist attacks. So she didn't allow me to complete knowing very well that this point is very strong. No, even that came as headline. Finish. So does it mean that she is asking me and she is not allowing me to complete? So just because I made a very strong point, she cuts me down. And then, immediately to help her, you have Kabir Khan interjecting. So that means she didn't allow me to give the final comments. I spoke for less than 17 seconds. So as I told you, the steering wheel is in the hands of the moderator. So here, but people realized many a time. So for intelligent people, who know the media, we can really see behind the scenes. But for general layman, who are unaware of the media, so I think Javed Iqbal may not be well versed with the media. But if he knows the media well, he would have made that comment. Jazakallah, Dr. Zakir. Thank you for your uh, comments, which uh, actually turned the tables over on the understanding when it was half cut. You completed the other half. Uh, mashallah, I think the audience gets more enlightened on that. Uh, the next question from the brother at the back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
there were two females from the audience who were discussing about the hijab. Uh, first, a Muslim uh, female said that I wear a hijab and I will explain to those who are not wearing a hijab that you should uh, wear a hijab as a Muslim. But then a f Muslim uh, female, another Muslim female, she said that, that she will explain to her. That means she thinks that it is wrong. So she doesn't find it wrong that not wearing a hijab is okay for her. So what are your comments on this compulsion of uh, wearing a hijab as a Muslim? Yes, I do agree that uh, when uh, Barakadat asked this girl was wearing a hijab, and she explained that she is wearing a hijab out of free will, and then Barakadat asked her that if another Muslim girl does not wear, would you mind? She said, I wouldn't mind, but I'll explain to her. That wasn't taken very well by Barakadat, neither one of the panelists, the Najib Jung. Oh, see, that is counseling. That's the problem. That's the problem with fanatic Muslim, he said something like that. That's not the problem. That's the problem with the practicing Muslim. It's not a problem. It is the duty of a practicing Muslim. As I mentioned, Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 110, Puntum khaira ummatin ukhijat linnas, taap miruna bil maruf hana munkotum inna billah. That ye are the best of people evolved for mankind because we enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong. If you do not enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong, we aren't the best of people. So Najib Jang, being a vice chancellor of Jamia Millia, doesn't know this verse of the Quran. It's compulsory duty. So he's saying it is a problem with such Muslims. It is the duty of every practicing Muslim. Similarly, that girl who said, that means she does not agree. Yes, she does not mind, but she does not agree. Similarly, when I said that if a person does not have drugs, and if I counsel him don't have drugs, then Najib Jang will be happy. Because the secular world feels the drug is wrong. So just because the secular world feels that the drug is harmful, and when I'm counseling a person who's a drug addict, don't have drugs, they're happy. Similarly, when I have knowledge of the Quran, and I know that modesty is important, and if you hear my talks on women's rights in Islam, that why is hijab required? As the Quran says in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse 59, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women that when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak, put on the jilbab, so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. One of the reasons for East teasing, for molestation, for the rape, is the way the girls are disturbed. Besides the rapist being responsible, even the girls and the ladies very such clothes are responsible. Tali duas se bachti. And I've given various answers. Time doesn't permit me to give a long answer. But if you see my cassette on women's rights in Islam, I've given the reason for hijab. Or misconception about Islam. What is the reason for hijab? So a girl who knows this will really want to be modest. On the other hand, the girl who is revealing more than concealing. Why is she doing this? Even she knows that by revealing, more people will look at her. So she wants more people to look at her. She may not like being raped, that's a different question. But, you know, as I said, that she is responsible. So what we realize that Islam is a religion which has the solution to the problems of humankind. Most of the religions may say not to rob, not to rape. Islam has a solution how to prevent robbery. Islam has a solution how to prevent rape and molestation. But if everyone follows Islam, then who will go to the fashion shows? Who will see fashion TV? Who will see these movies? So it will be a hit on the billion dollar industry. So, so that's the reason this billion dollar industry, the media, is trying its level best that no one accepts this modern discourse. And that's the reason they have such show, because if everyone agrees with the modest risk code, then this industry would go in a loss. It's appropriate that we have uh, comments from Dr. Zakir on the attacks or negative comments received on this show. We have from non-Muslim brothers. One is Mahesh VK who says, Dr. Zakir Naik is a big fraud. Dr. Zakir, your comments. Fine, if I'm a fraud, where is the fraud? You point out where the fraud is and I'll accept it. Just by saying, so and so person is a fraud, you tell me which portion of my speech was a fraud, or which action of mine was a fraud, and analyze it, and if it is the truth, I'll accept it. But just making allegation without giving proof, it's not a work of an honest person.